Hey guys, welcome back to Erudite Magic. My name is Jeff. If you're new to the channel, we talk almost 100% exclusively about magic books. So if that's your thing, smash that like button and click subscribe so that you don't miss any of this content. As you know, we've been going through Animan's five foot shelf of magic and I have been following the original rules as proposed by none other than Ted Animan himself. Those rules are specific in that the five foot shelf should help someone who is new to magic learn everything there is to know about magic and it needs to be readily available to them. Therefore, I am not proposing any books that are completely out of print, although you may see that we'll dodge a little bit of that requirement with some modern technology. Let's get right into this. If you haven't already, I encourage you to go back and watch feet one through three so that you can build that foundation because these books are kind of going in order. I gotta be honest and tell you, this has been a lot tougher than I thought it would be to come up with the fourth and the fifth foot of this five foot shelf because as you go further into the shelf, I think there's a lot more room for differences of opinion and specialization, which is going to make more of a difference depending on what you're trying to achieve. On top of that, it's sad to me when I look at my shelf and see how many of these books are actually out of print. That just means you gotta buy more of them and buy them now. The first book of my fourth foot here is Joshua J's Complete Course in Magic. Rather, Joshua J's Magic the Complete Course. This book is one of the top beginner books that I recommend to anybody. I know you're probably thinking, wait, we're four feet into this and you're recommending a beginner's book. Well, yes, because I don't anticipate that you're going to buy these books in order. I'm just recommending them in maybe a prioritized order. This book is a fabulous starter volume. You get a DVD with performances that show you how you can perform, plus you get the book, which is always more valuable in my opinion. He goes through a ton of classics in the book. It's not just card tricks. He talks about the linking rings. He talks about coin tricks. He talks about illusions money tricks. It's all here. So this is a great book. And if you are ever considering buying just one book to give to that aspiring magician, this book is definitely one of the ways to go and highly recommend it. If you've been watching this channel for any length of time, you know that I really like Mike Caveney and the books that he puts out. So it will probably come as no surprise that book number two here on the fourth foot is Wise Guy. The Magic of Harry Anderson, which I did a complete review of just a few weeks ago. So make sure that you watch that review if you want an in-depth analysis of this book. The summary here is that this book will teach you what it means to become a true character in magic and to develop your own sense of personality and inject that into your performances, as well as give you a lot of really great killer magic that was used in front of some of the world's largest audiences on Saturday Night Live, David Letterman, all the different TV shows that Harry Anderson appeared on, as well as stages across the country. So you really can't go wrong with this book, and it's imminently affordable at $35. So make sure that you pick this one up if you care about developing your character as a magician, as well as learning some really great magic. While we're on the subject of character development, you may not always get the same reaction from magicians when you talk about Daryl Fitzke. However, his book, Showmanship for Magicians, I think is one of the best of his trilogy. In fact, this book, I believe, Mike Caveney has a little blurb on the back about how this book really changed his trajectory as a magician, as well as Steve Martin. Not everybody knows that Steve Martin started off uh, working at a magic shop out in California and perform some magic before going to comedy full time. And this book was one of the influential books for him. I found it to be very influential. It changed even the way I dress when I perform because he talks about that, about how to add color and variety and spice to your act so that audiences aren't bored watching the same thing time after time after time and trick after trick after trick. So it's a pretty, uh, pretty thin book. It doesn't take a whole lot to read through it, but it is highly recommended. And it's also not very expensive because at this point it's relatively old. 
It was actually published in 1943, but I don't think that a lot of the advice has changed. I think you'll find it to be basically as applicable now as it was then. I have to tell a quick story here. One of the first people that I ever met at a magic convention, I started attending Magi Fest, and one of the first people I ran into in the hallway was Simon Aronson. With his wife, Ginny, they both kind of took me under their wing for that first time at a magic conference, gave me some pointers about how I should use my time and sessioning and how I could skip events and, and make the most of the time there. Simon Aronson was a true gentleman and a wonderful magician, both a creator and as a performer. And so it will come as no surprise that I recommend his book, Try the Impossible, which is intended to be for the beginner of memdeck work, which if you know anything about Simon Aronson, he developed what they call the Aronson Stack, which is still available for free if you'd like to use that, uh, the memory method that you choose to use to memorize it. He has some tips in one of his earlier books, and this book is focused on tricks that maybe use the stack, but you don't have to have it memorized. So if you're just getting started, this is a fantastic place to start with that. You'll find a number of really uh, easy to do things with his deck stack. And um, in addition, you'll find one of the most devious principles that I have ever seen, which is called the undo influence principle. The undo influence principle alone is worth the price of the book because you're gonna get several tricks in here that use that and it'll, it'll fool you just doing it for yourself. I promise you that. Simon Aronson at times could write a lot of detail in his books. So when you get this book, recognize that he's going to give you a lot of history. He's gonna give you a lot of thinking as well as variations on a theme for whatever he happened to be thinking about when he was writing and getting ready to publish these routines. Most of the items in this book are going to be very easy to do. There are a ton of spelling tricks to find the different four of a kinds within a deck. So if that's your thing, or if you're just getting into mem deck work, I think that this is well worth a look and is widely available. As a practicing mentalist, I'm fairly picky about the books that I recommend for mentalism because I think there's a lot of trash being published right now by people who don't have the experience, have not put the time in the saddle with the tricks, and they're really just out to make the quick buck on their their uh, short-term fame, as it were. Uh, this next book is not one of those. It is a great mentalism book. And in fact, even if you just do mental magic, this book is gonna be great. It is What Lies Inside by Florian Severin. I have done a review of this book on my Instagram channel, but I will be publishing another more full and complete review here on the YouTube channel because I believe that this book deserves more of your attention than I can give it here in this quick summary of a five foot shelf. But this book is great. It's a German mentalist and magician. He originally published this in German called 13 Steps to Vandalism. Kind of crazy, wacky, off the wall ideas as well as some very deep thinking on mentalism, making it entertaining, inserting some surprise into your presentations of mentalism as well as one of the best discussions of pre-show work that I have ever seen. I referred to this book and this book alone when I was going through how I was going to do pre-show or if I was even going to include it at all in my act. I ended up not doing it, but if I had, I promise you, the method in this book is the method that I would choose to deploy for any kind of pre-show work. Anyone who's a regular attender of Magi Fest really needs no introduction to the name Gene Anderson well known for his newspaper magic act and book by the same name. He has been delighting magicians for many decades with his creative mind and his infectious smile. If you see Gene at a convention, you definitely need to go up and talk to him. He's a lot of fun to talk to, has so many great stories, and is such a, such a gentleman. His book, Gene Anderson, The Book, is a fantastic a uh, little book about his magic after newspaper magic that he published. He did a lecture on this at Magi Fest with one of the funniest presentations I've ever seen with a die box using the premise of Old Mother Hubbard. And uh, I don't want to spoil too much, but you can probably find a clip of him performing that routine here on YouTube. It is in the book. This book is 
everything he's been working on, like I said, for the last many decades that he has not yet had an opportunity to publish before this in um, other books. The cool thing about this book is that there are lots of pictures and he gives you his script. He gives you lots of uh, comments about how you can construct your own props. And there's a quite a wide variety of effects in here. You have everything from jumbo cards to ropes to newspaper hats. His torn and restored newspaper is even tipped in here as with some updates. So if you're interested in seeing the latest thinking that Mr. Anderson has on what is widely regarded as one of the best torn and restored newspapers out there, you will want to give this book a look. In addition, this book has one of my favorite essays on being what Mr. Anderson calls a part-time professional, which is me and it is so many other magicians out there uh, who consider themselves to be part-time professionals. And what does that mean to you in terms of your development? Mr. Anderson himself was a part-time professional for so many years. He had a great career with DuPont and also found a lot of time to devote to his craft, his art, and his passion, magic. His infectious enthusiasm for magic permeates the book and you will find yourself returning to it many times over. You can get that directly from him and I will link to that. The entire mentalism world was rocked back in the 90s when Banachek, also known as Steve Shaw, but is, has legally changed his name to Banachek and performs under the same, published the Psychological Subtleties books, books one, two, and three. These books are, I think, relatively underappreciated. A lot of people buy them thinking that they are full of tricks and things that you can just uh, immediately start using, but it's not that kind of book at all. In fact, the further you go into mentalism or mental magic, the more you start to understand some of the principles that are at work and psychological subtleties. These are the types of items that are indeed what the title says. They're subtleties. They're intended to be inserted into your routines in the right place to add just that little bit of extra realism that's going to sell an audience on the fact that you're really walking through their mind and telling them what they're thinking. So this is not the type of book that you're going to pick up and read through the trick and then go out and try it on your friends at, uh, uh, at a party. Instead, if you are a more serious student of mentalism and have the opportunity to perform in platform or stage type settings, you're going to get a lot more benefit from each of these books. Book one is probably my favorite of the three, although each of the other two, uh, after the initial success of the first one, attracted a lot more attention from world-renowned mentalists who all contributed different routines, effects, and subtleties into these books. So if you're working through a mentalism routine and trying to put it through its paces, get the right beats, you're going to want to refer to these books to see if there are items that you could use that would take it just to that next level. Because uh, if you're adding 1% to the routines, eventually you're going to get to a much better routine if you continuously work on that. And these books will help you get there. I'm going to cheat just a tiny little bit. I hope you don't mind. Like I have done in previous shelves, we've talked about I don't recommend books that are completely out of print. However, I've granted myself an exception already for books that are out of print in physical form but are still available as an ebook. So this next book is The Classic Magic of Larry Jennings. This is a wonderful card book. It's not strictly cards, but a wonderful card book by a well-known connoisseur of card magic, Larry Jennings, who uh, was also, again, a part-time professional for so many years before devoting his complete time and attention to magic at the Magic Castle. You're going to find all of his classic routines in here. Some of them have been published in other places, but I would say that no serious student of card magic has ignored Larry Jennings' magic. And in this case, I think that the classic magic of Larry Jennings offers the best that Larry Jennings has created. Written by Mike Maxwell, um, the... Illustrations are old school, which appeals to me greatly, and uh, the book just has a very classic feel to it. You're not going to have any trouble learning, although I am not always a fan of Miss, Mr. Maxwell's writing style. You're not going to have any trouble learning any of the effects here, and there's plenty to choose from uh, across the board, and there are even some other effects using his cups and balls routine, which are not cards. 
Again, you can pick this one up as an ebook on the LNL EPUB website. If you can snag a hard copy, it's always a wonderful investment. I enjoy holding that physical copy in my hands as I'm reading, but there's certainly nothing wrong with the ebook, and in fact, some might find it preferable for traveling or for searching through it. Another cheat here, the book Impossibilia by John Bannon. If you've watched in previous shelf segments, I have indicated that I am a fan of John Bannon. In fact, Dear, Mist Dear Mr. Fantasy made the cut as one of my favorite card magic books of all time. Impossibilia is a, another great book by John Bannon, one of his earlier works, but it has a ton of really great magic and is not limited simply to cards. What you're gonna find in this book are chop cup routines, cups and balls, coin work, including a, a copper silver brass routine that he uses, as well as many other delightful card magic tricks, including his Play It Straight Triumph, which many people know from either a download or other versions that have been published, but you can find the original Bannon Triumph right here in Impossibilia. And if you wait for a good deal, you can always pick this up on the LNL EPUB website for a song. Although I mentioned earlier that I'm an Aronson Stack kind of guy when it comes to uh, Memdeck work, I will tell you that I am no stranger to the work of Juan Tamariz and his book, Mnemonica, which is his own stack, an excellent one, and used by many of the sharpest card magicians in the world. It has its own set of advantages and disadvantages, so you'll want to do some research maybe before committing to choosing one or the other. You may be saying, well, if you use Aronson's stack, why do you have Mnemonica? Because the book itself has many stack independent routines. And in fact, uh, much of the material in the book can be used no matter what your stack is, whether it's Aronson, Mnemonica, uh, it doesn't really make a difference. So choose the one that you want to use. You're going to find lots of usable material. And if you do choose to use Mnemonica, this will also teach you some stack dependent tricks they go through um, different sections of the book, deal with using a half stack, a full stack, partial stack, getting back into stack. You know, there's all kinds of neat references here. And if you know Juan Tamariz, you're going to want to know his thinking on the use of a mem deck. So uh, definitely consider this one. And it is, again, widely available. So that's always a good thing. Last but certainly not least is Guy Hollingworth's Drawing Room Deceptions. A great book, beautiful book. I mean, just look at this thing. It's got some uh, gold foil on it with uh, black and uh, red, the red cloth binding. It's just a gorgeous book. It is put out by Mike Caveney and MC Magic Words. The, it is completely written and illustrated by Guy Hollingworth and I am totally impressed with the drawings as well as the routines. This is for a more serious student of sleight of hand card magic. This is not going to be for the beginner or someone who's looking for subtleties over sleight of hand. This is going to be very slight heavy. Not everything is. There are obviously several tricks in here that don't rely on heavy sleight of hand, but I think you'd probably be crazy to get this book if you're not looking to get into or at least understand the thinking of a serious student of sleight of hand. It's not that expensive. You can still get it. He teaches his world famous Reformation um, torn and restored card, which was all the rage back in the late 90s, early 2000s, I want to say. And so you'll, you'll find that in here as well as many of Guy Hollingworth's other classic card inventions, stuff that you'll find nowhere else. So if you're looking for something unique and different, this is the place to find it. And I hope you will check out his book, Drawing Room Deceptions. Whew. So that's it. That's foot four of my five foot shelf of magic. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, if you have other books that you would recommend or you think should make it into the last and final foot of magic, please comment below because I would love to hear about that and take note of it in case I can include it in my shelf. As always, I'm an open book, so if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. And until next time, keep reading.